From the Channel Seed Studios. Studios. Welcome to The Hook. A look behind the lines with Mike Palm and Ken Miller. Powered by Circus Sports Iowa. Sports betting the way it should be. This is Iowa Everywhere. Channel Seed. Seedsmanship at work. And hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Hook. My name's Ken Miller. Mike Palm is with me, as he normally is, Vice President of Operations at Circus Sports. I talk sports in Des Moines on Des Moines Sports Station, 106.3 KXNO, Monday through Friday, 11 to 1, with my partner, Trent Condon, who uh, will, along with me, will be out in Las Vegas next week. So next week's show will be coming uh, from Las Vegas. I'm sure I'll be at Circa. Mike, you may be at the D. I know Bet Bash is going to be on. You're going to be pulled in a lot of different directions. You know, let's start there with, with Bet Bash. I know we're a couple hours away from kickoff of the first preseason game in the NFL. We'll touch on that for just a second. But uh, Bet Bash, uh, it's key, it continues to grow every year. I know that we talked earlier and Circa is sold out and the D, a lot of the rooms are uh, taken up for this week. Whose kind of brainchild was this and how big has it gotten? And is there still room to grow, do you think? Yeah, you know, it's a professional gambler that goes by Spanky uh, from New Jersey. Is uh, He's got a, you know, a Greek name, but he goes by Spanky and he put this together two years ago. It's sort of a convention for, uh, for the sports betting space, but includes many pro sports bettors as well as bookmakers, as well as commentators in the space media that covers it and uh it's a meet and greet so it's a great networking opportunity and then they have to me the highlight of it is the panels they do on the different subjects they're really well put together they have some uh, all-star guests on them uh and then this year uh he got together with matt metcalf spake he did and they they went and sold it to derek to start this hall of fame um sports gambling hall of fame which we have constructed at circa you'll see it when you come out Mm-hmm. And uh, the Hall of Fame ceremony is going to be Friday when it opens, and we're inducting 10 members to the initial class of the Hall of Fame. Five are deceased, five are living. Wow. I'm emceeing that dinner ceremony from 6 to 10 next Friday night. But, I mean, it's a who's who. Like, you know, uh, Jack Binion's presenting Billy Walters. That's wow. that's the close of the night. So, But it, it's a lot of big names. And Chris Anders is presenting his uncle, Jack Franzi and Vinnie Maiulo is presenting Jackie gone and Michael gone's accepting yeah. and yeah. You know, people who are past their, their kids or grandkids are accepting the awards for them. Of course, the gone's and Chris Andrews from the South point, Brett Musburger, is he a part of this class? If not this class, I'm guessing he'll get in at some point for what he did media wise. I mean, my friends out in the desert or our friends out in the desert became such a, a, uh, one of his more, uh, famous lines when he would do college football or the NFL. That's interesting. I'm not sure. Uh, they had a committee. It's a 16 person committee that they, they put together. Spanky's not on it. Derek's not on it. Matt Metcalf is on the committee. They brought up a rules criteria of what you need to be in the Hall of Fame. And then people are presented and you have to get 12 of the 16 votes. So you have to get 75 percent. So I'd have to look at the criteria to see if a, a media member like Brent uh, could go in. I'm sure he'll, uh, if he's still, if he's come back, he might still be in Montana for the summer with his family. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I know he'll come back uh, usually mid August. So he might not be back yet. If he is, I'm sure he'll be at the ceremony um, Friday night. My good friend, Thomas Gable, who I've never met in person, who runs the Borgata is coming for Bet Bash. I'm going to have dinner with him and then he'll be at the ceremony as well. That's awesome. Uh, and and everyday Joes, I mean, people that are, are starting to you know, find, find they've taken a liking to betting on sports. This is for them too, right? You can actually, oh, yes. you can learn uh, from some of these professionals. Oh, absolutely. It's like I said, it's a networking, but the panels are terrific and they go through different subjects that come up. Um, one of them is going to be specifically on betting college football. There's one about sports betting in the Twitter age. Jeff Benson's actually a panelist on that oh, one. Right. I know Mitch Moss is a moderator on one of them. So they're they're terrific. The panels are terrific. I will sit through all four of them if I have time. Uh, very nice. And those are on Thursday, Friday, 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 Friday. Friday from I think nine to two or ten to two in the morning into early afternoon. A little break and then back for the Hall of Fame. Well, yep. good stuff. A lot of ground to cover, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, well, game number one of the preseason is almost upon us. The Jets and the Browns. So. 
for people who are going to watch the game and they're going to they just want to have a bet on the game because they're going to watch it, what do you look for, Mike? What are some of the keys to betting preseason football? Are there any? You know, I don't get too heavily involved, but I, I do play some totals. Um, there's a, a trend in the last 15 years in these preseason games with the number 37. If the total's 37 or higher, the over hits 58% of the time. If it's 36 and a half or lower, it goes to the uh, it goes to the under a little over 60%. Mm. The Hall of Fame game is an even stronger trend. Although, you know, we talk about right angle sports Raz. They put out when this total was 31 and a half the over, and that moved the number a couple points. So, uh, where the value is, I'll probably just take a wait and see approach here tonight. I know we're all getting together to watch it at the underhang. Derek's got a new area we're going to be this year and some new food choices and stuff. And so it's kind of like an experimental night, like it's experimental for these teams, how we're going to handle football season and where people are going to be. So I don't know if I'll even have a wager on the game. You know, yeah. certain teams try to win. Others don't care. Right. I think that's kind of built into the number. But John Harbaugh has been incredible, not just from a wins loss, but against the spread, even with, with Baltimore in the preseason in the last five years as well. So let me pick up on something you just said, uh, food op- uh, food options at the underhang. So will that be in-house? And is this yeah. something that's going to start like next week it's, when we're out there? It's, it's um, you know, the barbecue truck, Project Barbecue, uh, yeah. has, has yeah. partnered with Omaha Steaks. And they're going to be pushing some Omaha Steaks products and offering it. We're going to have some sampling of some of those tonight as well. So it might be as early as next week when you're there. Well, good stuff, because I saw the, the barbecue place outside. I didn't realize yeah. this, but um, they also do a breakfast. Oh, yes, they have breakfast, too, now. And uh, it's very popular on Saturdays and Sundays during football. I bet it is. Well, football is upon us, so I'll use your term popular. What has been popular as far as let's do the NFL first? Uh, we're into August. People are now, fantasy players are doing their drafts, so they're starting to get a little dangerous with their opinions that they think that they've got. they've identified <laughs> Perhaps a team that is uh, flying under the radar, if you will. Who's that team, Mike? Who, what have you seen as far as people betting futures or starting to uh, bet some of the numbers? Pretty consistently, uh, pretty consistently, we've seen money on Baltimore this year. It, they tend to get money before the year. I mean, they're kind of a chic team every year, like the Cincinnati Reds are kind of a chic team or the White Sox in baseball, but. We've seen Baltimore money all throughout the summer. We saw some Denver Broncos money uh, last week after Peyton uh, was uh, very critical of the coaching job and saying this was a very talented team, a playoff team. Mm -hmm. Seattle maybe on the NFC side has got a little bit of love, but it's, you know, it's Philly Philly and uh, 49ers and everybody else uh, in a lot of people's opinions. But I'd say that I'd say there's more sharper money to under and it's been all the way on the Cardinals, right? Everybody's just bet the Cardinals under five and a half, under five. Da, 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 yeah. da. But Raiders, a lot of anti-Raider money in the last month. Even in Las Vegas. Even in Las Vegas, yes. That, Even in Las Vegas, yeah. That surprises me because, you know, op fans are optimistic for the most part. They think their team is going to be very good, and you would think that they'd be playing the over. Uh, how closely? I know the answer is very closely. Um, you guys get such terrific information. Joe Burrow with Cincinnati. Is there a fear that this is maybe worse than is being let on? I mean, because if he's healthy for week number one, and I know the people like the Baltimore Ravens you just said that, and they're in the same division with the you with the Bengals. How closely are you watching Joe Burrow? Well, pretty closely, because I mean, he, he might have affect the needle. He's certainly top five, right, in affecting yeah. the needle on a team. I would say Mahomes. Uh, and he's right there in the argument for number two, Josh Allen, you know. Yep. Um, so not much of a move in the market, but we'll see as we get reports out about his health and his timeline to return, and will he be 100% for their opener? Uh, it's probably a team that can sustain a game or two without him, but uh, you miss a month, that's right. that's that's a huge effect in, in, in another competitive division right. uh, with people, you know, Tomlin never finishes under 500, oh. and – you know, a lot of people are high on Baltimore, and it's a kind of a do or die year. I mean, Stefanski's going to go from coach of the year to fired in a couple of years. Yes, they don't true. put up, right? It's supposed yep. to be a bounce back year for Deshaun. Yeah. So, I mean, there's high expectations for every team in that division. So you could make a case yep. for every team in that division. Yep. I couldn't agree uh, with you more. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the East real quick. When Aaron Rodgers became a New York Jet, I'm guessing that you saw a lot of action right away. Has it tailed off a little bit? 
And who is the um, who's the public gravitating to in the East? Is it still the Bills? Is there some Dolphins love? I'll tell you, there's some Patriots love. I was is there? At- over on the win, over seven and a half wins is a liability for us. I was just looking at it this afternoon. If there's any team that would not, the Jets were bet down too much on the Rodgers right. news, and they've kind of drifted back. I mean, it was unreasonable yeah. to say they're 12 to one to win the Super Bowl or whatever. Ludicrous. Right. Um, they have a very tough early schedule, by the way. Uh, but I see in terms of just, you know, in terms of the win totals, New England's gotten more positive play than anyone in the division. I think we're sleeping on Miami a little bit. I do too. But Tua, you know, every snap might be his last snap of That's his life. True. So, But that team seems loaded as well. And if the rookie coach, who I think made some mistakes in game management last year, improves, you know, we don't talk about coaches improving, Kenny. Mm-hmm. We only talk about how is a player going to improve from year one to two, two to three. Will there be a decline? How about the coach? Yeah. The coaches should get better too as they go, especially the ones that it was their first time leading the team. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of uh, bullish on the Dolphins. I am too. I think they can run the ball. They've got incredible weapons with Tyreek Hill. Of course, Jalen Waddle is is going to be a star. I like their defense. Don't know much about the offensive line, but you see, you hit the nail on the head. Um, if Tua stays healthy, this team can win a lot of football games. Yeah, they're de- we'll de- decent defensively, special teams. Yeah, that's one of the home field advantages you don't talk enough about. But the, you know, the heat in the early and then the humidity in December—that's a very big factor. Even though it's not that warm, teams coming from cold climates into the humidity have a real hard time adjusting. So I think that's a big home field. I think the Dolphins are a playoff team, but the AFC is loaded. Yeah, you can make a case for so many. Yeah, the Dolphins when they host in the in the month of September, uh, they they alert the team to bring your bring your uh, your home uniforms because yep. we're wearing white. Yeah, which I don't know if that's between the ears, uh, <laughs> kind of a psychological advantage or not. But uh, but anyways, all right, let's switch to the college game. I, I love. I've told you this hundred times. I love Exactus. You guys have come out with Power Five Exactus again this year. Um, who you think is going to win? Uh, the the conference championship and the championship game and who will they beat? So if you like, I'll just say Iowa. You can get Iowa to win the Big Ten at whatever that price point might be. But if then you match the team that they're playing against, that price almost doubles and sometimes it's much significantly higher than that. I love the exactas. What was behind them? I think you said earlier on the radio today. This is year number four. Do they continue? Is it continuing to grow? Growing, growing for. World Series, growing for Super Bowl. Let's see in college now. We do them for, you know, conferences. So it'll be interesting. Um, I, You know, off the top of my head, I like kind of Boise State over Air Force in the Mountain West because okay. I, Air Force isn't going to lose a game. Then they're going to play at Boise probably twice in a row mm-hmm. to end the season, right? And I think yep. Boise will be tested because of the tough early schedule. That's one I would, I would look at. I'd have to study some of the conferences harder. Uh, but – you know how I like to do it, take two teams from each side. Now, yeah. with the elimination of divisions in some of mm-hmm. these conferences, you can't do it. That's why I don't like it also. But like, you know, what I did with baseball, I took, you know, I took Padres and Braves and I took uh, Astros and Blue Jays. And those, so those mm-hmm. are my combinations for the World Series. And now I have a year-long sweat. I'm, <laughs> I got two, I'm a, sweating at least two games every night. Yep. And most of the time, four. So I, I think they're really an interesting way to play it. And uh, I think it'll continue to take off in general and, and with the conferences with college football. That's interesting you say that because I took three. I took my Blue Jays, but I matched them up with the Padres and also yeah. uh, with the Atlanta Braves. Who, what is their baseball team that's caught your eye since the trade deadline? Well, the Cubs are playing really well. They I are. Mean, the Cubs are really playing well. Um uh-huh. I think there were a couple key acquisitions that went under the radar. Namely? Because everybody's talking about, and and it did move the needle, Verlander and Scherzer. Sure. And I guess Flaherty. um, uh, Terrific today. Terrific today. Beat Gaussman. Gaussman's out of that race. I think think Gaussman's out. I think it's a two-person race with Framber and Cole, and I think Cole's going to win it. Mm -hmm. I just don't think Gaussman... um, that hurts his ERA. I think Cole's winning it. I bet him at two. I bet him again at even money today just to keep hedging my framber. Anyhow, I think here's the most two undersung one. Lorenzen to the Phillies. From the Tigers, yeah. Who's great today. 
Yeah. He adds a, an arm to that rotation to go with to go with Wheeler, Nola, and Suarez. Mm -hmm. And their bullpen, their bullpen's the best in the game. I think they're better than they were last year when they made the World Series. And I, I think the most underrated pickup. Okay. It wasn't the guy they wanted. Remember, the Dodgers wanted to go get Ed, Eddie Rodriguez from the Tigers, Badly. Yeah. And he ended up staying in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I think Ryan Yarbrough was a terrific pickup for them. Well, uh, they certainly – it's an area of need, right? We talked about a couple of weeks ago. I mean, who's going to be your top uh, – I couldn't, tell, I couldn't, I can tell you Lance Lynn will be in the playoff rotation. Yeah, probably. And I can tell you, you know, and Urias will be, but who do we don't know? We haven't seen Kershaw. He pitched a simulated game today, but that's it. Well, but And the rest are all rookie right-handers. Yeah. They don't have Gonsolin, but he's only going to give you five innings. Mm -hmm. It's taking him a hundred pitches to get through five innings this year. Used to be, you could get six or seven out of him because he was efficient last year. So they're, they're starting rotations in array. I think it was a really good pickup. You know, Yarbrough will give you six. You can also do this thing where you start the closer with him. He's always been yeah. very good pitching the second through seventh inning, right? Yeah. I think it's a terrific pickup that nobody's going to talk about. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, do you like the Dodgers? No. I don't, need, I don't have one ticket on them. Not at all. I don't have anything. And they're, now they're only plus 250 and plus $5. Yeah. That I mean, the Braves are tough to bet at plus 140 and plus 260 or whatever they are to win the World Series. 360, I think. But yeah, yeah whatever they, they are, were, whatever, yeah. They, whatever the goofy price they are. But, um, you know, I can't I can't be at all. With, I will always be in a position this year to try to fade the Dodgers. Yeah, I've been that way all year long. Don't have one ticket on them. Uh, who was um, – are we at the point now that the trade deadline and – you, you've been putting out the most wins in, in every month of the Major League Baseball season. Yeah. It's been incredibly popular. Yeah. It's been fun to watch. I know my radio partner, Trent Condon, had a heck of a run oh, in June Reds. with Cincinnati, yeah. like 250 to 1. And yeah. he's very much in the hunt, you know, in the, in the last week in June. What are you seeing now? Are people starting to gravitate toward the chalk? Yeah, they are. But it's all about that bet is all about looking at the schedule. How many right. games are played? One. Yep. And Fort two, who are they playing? Yeah. And you're just trying to match up teams against where they have weaknesses in the schedule. And the odds are more based on the, the, the power rating of the team instead of the schedule when it's probably should be more heavily towards the schedule. So I think this will really take off. It took off this year. I think it'll take off. It's really good to do in the early months, right? The early months yeah, are where it's fun, it's fun and yeah. you can hit some of those outrageous prices. But it came down to one run in July. Baltimore. If Seattle would have won that last game against Boston uh, by five runs, they do it because the tiebreakers run differential. They tied for the number of wins, but Baltimore wow. won by run one run, and that, that's the way it went. And it was a six-figure swing for us. We, it was great because we had liability to the Mariners. Interesting. Well, um, I mean, obviously there's so many games, which makes it conducive to this type of bet. Yeah. How about NBA or NHL? Is that something you might tinker with? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know about NBA. Uh, NHL, you might do most points in a month. That could be fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think it would be for NBA. Yeah, I'm not sure how much you're right you do on that. Even well, who knows who's playing on any given night, let well, alone for the month. Yeah, <laughs> you with the load management, etc., yeah, etc. Yeah. Et right? No, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, circa million, circa survivor. Uh, we're out there. And I'm going to get all signed up. My buddy Matt Peralt, uh, Dave Sharapan, two guys I used to work with at different. Uh, uh, different locations along uh, along my career journey. They're going to be my proxies or our proxies. What are the numbers like, Mike? Well, I just pulled it at 1 p.m. Uh, we just went over 2,000 in the Survivor by 1 o'clock Pacific today. We're at 2,012 and at 1,087 in the million. So still mm -hmm. running almost 2 to 1. The guys in the back room are predicting 8,800 and 6,100. So they're still predicting we get there on both. 8,800. So does that mean eventually you'll put this uh, number up to 10,000? I would you'd... think that next year will be 10. I, I yeah. don't want to speak out of school. I think we might even get there this year. Yeah, we shall see. What else is going on? What's new in Las Vegas? Formula One, is that dispute kind of settled yet as far as oh. what they're going to allow the spectators to see? No, and now they got to build these bridges over the strip for pedestrians to be able to cross and oh, fire engines to be. It's It's just a nightmare. You can't move at all. It this this first year is really bad, and so yeah. It, what about uh, what about the A's? Are they coming? I guess they put up their their side of the money. They're coming. 
where are they going to play next year? That's, that's the, big the question. Thing. Oakland doesn't want them, and they're, where are they going to play here? I mean, Cash would Major League Baseball allow a full season to be played in the AAA ballpark? I don't know. It's 10,000 seats. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. They'll probably force them to make some sort of deal in Oakland or somewhere up there in the Bay Area at some state. It's, that team's not going to be any good for a while, Kenny. I mean, no, I know. If, if they didn't come to Vegas till 26, I don't think they'd be any good. But they'll be here in 25, and it's going to be a way up. Speaking of that, though, the Mets aren't going to be good for a while either. I mean, oh my gosh, he's deconstructing that team. This could be the worst team next year. Yeah. I mean, and the money that they spent and the fan base, I mean, that's a pretty loyal fan base. And this was going to be, they were going to push the Braves. They could finish last. So might the St. Louis Cardinals. Boy, oh boy, it's weird to see the Cardinals down at the bottom, isn't it? Unbelievable. You've got a busy week. We'll do this next Thursday once again. I'll be uh, live from Las Vegas. Not beside you, but we'll be close. No, nah, we'll probably be right next to each other. We'll I, find, I'm good with that. I mean, I don't know what your schedule allows, but we'll I'll find, find you. some place in the book or up there at Victory Burger overlooking the ledger That'd somewhere be good to do too. this. That'd be, is, there many, is there much media in town next week or just Oh, the, my God. We're putting this – This uh, well, that's not for next week. There will be some. Weeks. The week when we do our, our official sign-up weekend here, yeah, I yeah. think we have 52 different radio stations. You've here. got to be kidding no, me. No, we're taking up the whole ballroom. We're building it like – like it was a, a Super Bowl, a radio row. Right, like media row. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. Uh, good for you guys. We'll see you next week, Mike Palm. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate uh, you doing this as uh, we wrap up another episode of The Hook and time to go watch a little preseason NFL football. That's Mike Palm. I'm Ken Miller. Thanks for joining us here on Iowa Everywhere. You've been watching The Hook, and we'll see you next week from Circa in Las Vegas.